tonight's presentation, uh, without a doubt, is I think one we've been waiting for for quite some time, and we're so excited to be sharing with you because the details of what you're going to learn tonight really will have a profound effect and a profound impact on all of our lives over the next 30 days and the future of our company and the future of what we can all create at Ripplin. So uh, just a quick recap, um, Ripplin is the world's first ever social sharing platform that allows you to actually track your social influence as it spreads across the globe, whether you share a hot new app, a hot new website, a product like smartwatches, which might be coming soon, whatever it may be, we can track your social influence as your Ripple grows, and we can reward you for all the value taking place within it. Now, one of the key areas that we focus on, because everybody's aware that right now apps are pretty much the hottest ticket inside of the technology space. Virtually all new tech companies are focusing app first. There's tremendous amounts of money from venture capitals flowing into apps, yet the biggest problem that everybody's trying to solve in the app space is how do you get distribution? How does your app actually become well known? How does it actually reach the marketplace? And for the few apps that crack that code, and it's mostly, honestly, a matter of uh, timing and a lot of luck, you know, for the few apps that crack that code, you know, companies can go on to, to make billions of dollars and be worth a billion plus dollars and create some of the most uh, amazing success stories we've heard of our time. Yet, what's captivated us at Ripplin is that the people who drove the success of those apps, you and I, us, who's on the call, are cut out of the equation. Everybody else is getting paid, right? The, the, the startup founders, the venture capitalists, the banks, uh, et cetera. But the people who are actually responsible for the distribution, for the sharing of many of the world's hottest apps are completely cut out of the equation when it comes to sharing that wealth. And at Ripplin, uh, that's what our mission is to change. So tonight, we're revealing the launch details of PhotoGuessRu and pretty much everything you need to know about the launch of your first app worldwide because truly this is the first time in history, the first time in history that any human being has had the chance to participate in the profits, in the, in the value that's being created from sharing you know, the hottest new apps that exist in the App Store as they do today. So I have a special guest on the line who I'm incredibly excited to introduce to all of you as well. He's going to be sort of my, my partner in crime this evening, and uh, he's somebody who's extremely important to us all at, at Ripplin, and, uh, and thus extremely important to you as well, and a key member of your team, somebody who's been sort of in the, in the trenches as we've been creating all this, uh, and his name is Sunil Rawal. Now, Sunil, are you with me, my friend? Yes, I am. I'm here. It's great to hear your voice. Now, quick background on Sunil, everybody. Um, Sunil is, without a doubt, the most brilliant technologist that I know. I can say that uh, really without uh, question. He's just somebody I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for. And he's the chief technology officer of a company called the 90 Day, or actually the company is called Surya Rising. But what Surya Rising is well known for is that they are the world's first virtual app incubation company. That's correct, right, Sunil? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, what we do is we are, we've seen a trend. And, you know, there's sort of a whole pyramid to the trend, which I actually would like to talk about a little bit now in terms of what's happening with apps and actually segues nicely from what you were saying and I, I, the natural next step to what you were saying is you know everybody has an idea for an app it feels like and you know I got very interested in this mm -hmm. phenomenon a little while ago um, you know a couple of years ago I started asking around you know oh you know if you have any ideas for app come talk to me um, my background is in technology I've been working in software engineering for, for the last um, what 15 20 years something and yeah. um, you know, I tend to keep up with the things that are interesting and hot. And one of the things I was noticing, as everybody was, that apps were super hot. And to me, hot means I was, um, you know, present in the San Francisco area when the dot-com uh, boom was happening. And what I noticed then was everybody was saying, 
oh, I got this great idea for a website. It's going to make us loads and loads of money. Can you do a website for me? And at that time, it was very expensive. Um, but that got cheaper and cheaper. And now there's this next wave where everybody's <laughs> yeah. saying, hey, I got this great idea for an app. Um, and, you know, 90 Day App Challenge is designed to sort of address that thing. If you have an idea for an app, what yeah. do you do about that, right? I mean, you've noticed the same mm -hmm. thing, right, Jonathan? I mean, everybody's excited Absolutely. about a specific idea. Maybe more than Absolutely. one. Absolutely. <laughs> so I started asking around if people had good ideas and finally ended up connecting with Jonathan and with um, a few other people. And, you know, there's a sort of, there's a whole, there's a sort of breakdown of the kinds of people who are interested in apps. I'll get to Foda Gesseru in a, se in a second because this, this has bearing on it. Um, you know, there's the people who say, yeah, I've got this great idea for an app, but I'm not really willing to do anything about it. I just think it's a great idea. And it's the same with websites, right? Oh, I have a great idea for an e-commerce website, and it's, that's it. And it usually dies um, because you've got to have the drive behind it to get it going. What the 90 Day App Challenge is designed to do is to address the next level of people who say, I've got an idea for an app, and I'm willing to bet on it effectively. And what that mm -hmm. means is really committing. And committing, we take people through a six-month program, and the first three months are focused on what it means to be an app entrepreneur, what it means to be in the app space. Um, and then the next three months are focused on development of the app. So we take on their app, we develop it. And one of the apps that was, um, you know, we started working with quite a while ago, one of our first season of apps was called Photo Guess a Room. And... Mm -hmm. um, it Which was brings us to where we are today. <laughs> yeah, so it brings us to where yeah. we are today. So, so Photo Guessery, we were excited about because it had the social piece in it. There are a number of apps out there um, that do photo sort of zoomed in kind of puzzles. Um, zoomed in is one, um, four picks, one word, or others. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but we were excited about this one because it allows you to take your own pictures and to um, you know share them with your friends. So it might be a very personal picture you know, of your family or something, and then you can just share that with somebody else. And we, we like that idea a lot, so we started working with that idea, started getting really excited about it, and then Jonathan started talking to us about the possibility of sharing it within Ripplin. And it was, to me, it was an excellent match. The reason it was an excellent match is because, you know, if you look at the app space, the problem with apps is how do people find out about it? And I'm a physicist by mm -hmm. training, and I'm very into sort of statistics, and it is unlikely that your app, doesn't matter how good it is, it's unlikely that your app will just go viral with nothing behind it. It just doesn't happen. It happens, and we hear about the things that happen, but there are a million apps in the App Store, and you can count on mm -hmm. your fingers and toes the amount that went viral in the way that is interesting. Mm. Um, you know, so, you, you bring up another really great point, though, about partnership, and you know, sometimes you just kind of got to, I think, you got to thank the big guy in the sky because things work out in a way that you can't even foresee them working out, right? And the original vision of Ripplin has always been, hey, wait a minute, you know, let us be the distribution platform, right? Let all of us participate in the sharing of the hottest, coolest new apps in the world, but that doesn't mean that, you know, we really have the potential to make all those apps, and nor would we want to, because think about how limited our creativity would be if the only apps we had were ones we were thinking of because all the coolest new apps end up coming out of you know somebody has a huge problem they need to solve and nobody solved it before and all of a sudden some you know 19 year old gets a genius idea for an app or somebody else is hanging out with friends one night and all of a sudden the idea sparks and next thing you know there's there's Instagram and so Ripplin always saw you know, the world is full of incredible creativity, incredible genius, right? Yet all of these geniuses are, are struggling for how to actually get their idea out to the world. Well, what if we could actually curate and find the best new ideas coming in the app space, whether that's in gaming, whether it's in lifestyle, whether it's in entertainment, right? Whether it's in productivity. And, and you know, we can actually help these people beat the big guys because another problem that we, you know, I'm sure we could talk about for hours on this call, Sunil, too, is that, you know, the major big guys have really sort of owned the top 100 of the app market space. And if you're not really one of the large big companies that got started in apps early, then it's very difficult to actually get yourself into the top 100. And so all of a sudden there's this huge problem that I truly believe Ripplin is effectively solving 
uh, you know, with a partnership like the one we have with the 90 Day App Challenge, because for the first time, really, you know, we can find and curate many of the best ideas out there, and we can sort of using the power of the people and rewarding the people in a sort of people-driven model actually you know create our own distribution for the best ideas without really you know having it depend on hey you know how much ad money did I throw at this thing so that I could get to the top 100 and hopefully you know I can stay in the top 100 long enough so that people you know download me but what that means is there's really only going to be a hundred apps that win right I mean how, how many more are going to win if you're not in the top 100 then you don't win and to us that's that's a broken model that I think is a is a billion dollar truly a multi billion dollar opportunity if we solve it and every single person who's on the line here tonight has the chance to participate in the rewards of solving that problem and has a chance to participate and what I truly believe um, you know is one of the greatest concepts that that the uh, that the app space and really that the technology space has seen in quite some time uh, for the for the distribution of these products so. In any case, you know I'm very excited to be here, Sunil. Um, you know we've both been working, we've been working hard. I know that at the 90 Day App Challenge team, you know, Sunil, you really lead up the engineering and the in the development of all the different apps. Currently, 90 Day App Challenge has you have 30 different apps in your two seasons. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know we're we're just uh, working as hard as we can to get them out. I think. There's a couple of things in there that um, that I want to I, I want to pick up on that you said. Um, you know, one of the things that we focus on in 90 Day App Challenge is it's not good enough to just get an app out there. And this is actually one mm. of the reasons why we're excited about Photogesseru. I think we won't start work on an app unless we as a team, we're a small team, but unless we as a team are saying to each other, "Yeah, we want this app." We want it mm -hmm. because if it's just an idea, oh, you know, I have this journaling idea. It's like, okay, there are 500 other journaling apps out there. Why is this one interesting? So we will we'll spend a good amount of time just going around and just trying to figure out with the usually with the authors of the app what is the special something because I you know I guarantee you for any app idea you have it's been done it's yeah. been done largely right so if you look Photoguesser if you really dig for those kinds of apps. There's kinds of apps like that. So the question is, what is it that makes the difference between mm. an app that just sits there and gets five downloads and makes you, you know, hopefully makes you five dollars, or, or really becomes something interesting? And the difference to me, there's a number of differences. One is distribution. The other is excellent execution. It means, you know, beautiful, beautiful, good you, you know, UI and, you know, ability to share all those pieces are really important so we focus really heavily on those things rather than mm -hmm. just saying yeah we're going to get apps out there so yeah we have another well 29 mm -hmm. actually now <laughs> apps to get out <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and yeah I've... the thing is we're not willing to just say yeah we're just going to crack it out for two weeks and get a rubbish design on it we're actually going to spend the time and make it good because it's going to pay off so we've and done I, that I, we've spent a long time on photo um, I, I I hope everybody can appreciate because truly um, you know what you just shared really is the secret to a successful app because even if you've got the best distribution channel in the world nobody wants to play something that stinks right <laughs> so none of us want to be a part of something or, or participate in something that really isn't excellent and yeah, Sunil, I, I can 100 percent say that that you guys represent excellence and you know in a second I think uh, when we actually start talking about some of the dates for the rollout of photo gets through etc it'd probably be uh, really enlightening for you to even share some of the processes behind you know how much the team has went through literally just focusing on this on this one app so everybody gets an idea of the quality control behind each product and also you know what's coming down the pipeline because this is really as I don't know if you can read my screen here but really photo guess Roo is the first of several apps coming down the pipeline and I think what we have the power to do as a community is we really have the power to curate uh, many of of the best ideas out there, right? You can take a good idea, but with with a partnership like the 90 Day App Challenge represents, you know, all of a sudden we have a whole team that, and all of us, everyone in the Ripplin community, we can be incubating and sharing ideas for how to really 
uh, you know, put a unique twist on these apps that nobody's ever seen before. So that we're truly coming to market with completely innovative products, things people have not done before with a distribution model that the world hasn't seen before. And that combination right there gives you the blue ocean, uh, the blue ocean possibility that, that we've been talking about and sharing about. So I know, Sunil, that there's, there's a bunch more that you guys are working on, and uh, I might have you hint just a few of the apps that are, are really on the heels of Photo Guessaroo that we all have potential to, uh, to see very soon as well, because I know it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah, I want to say something about, I actually want to say something about Photo Guessaroo too, because, um, you know, I think in the, in the, you know, in the early discussions with you, Jonathan, you know, we were, I think we were all sort of like, okay, maybe this is, it's kind of a cutesy name, is that really totally appropriate, and, you know, we want it to be a big splash, and those sorts of things, and I think where we've come around to is, you know, it is kind yeah. of cutesy, right? It's <laughs> kind of fun, and we're sort of treating it like yeah. that. This is, because because this is the first time this kind of thing has been done, it's to some degree an experiment, um, and we're seeing if this this model can fly. And I want to pick up on a little thread you mentioned to what um, you know what's going to make this successful. Um, you know, it, this is it, this is slightly different from the normal uh, models that um, that are in this kind of network. And the main thing here, I know you're going to get to this in terms of the training, but the main thing here is sharing. Now I know sharing is not different, it's just the, the channel, is, is, you know, that's what you do, everybody does that, right? But mm. the channels of sharing are slightly different, it's super important that those channels um, are appropriate and there isn't, you know, the difference here, sort of maybe what you're used to, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong Jonathan, but the sort of what you're used to maybe is like, it's a handshake, right? There's a physical passing of, of you know, um, information and you know maybe mm -hmm. making a presentation or yeah. talking it up to somebody so the talking it up still has to happen but you know it happens it doesn't have to happen to the same degree because this is this is an app where it's free right it's free to begin with but people are encouraged to participate participate means use all the features that are in there buy the hints become a VIP do all those things it's not there's no physical goods that are exchanging hands and in particular, I think we've all noticed, and I think this is the thing I'm super excited about, we've all noticed that if you find an app you like, it, what, you know, you have no hesitation going to your buddy or his buddy or anybody, oh, oh, look at this, this is the best app ever, right? Yep. The great thing about it is, and I want to tie back to this point about Photo Guesseru being kind of cutesy, sort of, you know, uh, feeling fleeting kind of, the great thing about this, oh yeah, look at this app, you know, I found this great thing, it's the next day you see the same friend, you're like, no, no, look at this app. <laughs> I see this next app, right? <laughs> because they're yeah. much smaller in scope. And that, you know, that's different. And there's a different kind of material that's passing down the chain, kind of, passing down the ripples. Well, um, you're you're hitting upon a you're hitting upon something huge too, which I know has been a, a topic of conversation in, in our team and our strategy for a long time, which is how to create an app network. And you know, I think it's probably definitely worth sharing the strategy with our with the whole Rippling community because this is really going to paint the picture for how we can actually create billions and billions of dollars in value through the power of this platform. And you know, what you just mentioned, Sunil, is, is absolutely the truth. There really isn't many you know end all be all apps, right? You know, right. a lot of the most popular games today are really popular for a couple months and then they kind of move on to the next game. And so if you'll notice what the most successful companies in the world have done, the companies that are literally worth billions of dollars in this space, is that they create an app network. And so because there's a network of apps, it's never just one app, there's always another app right after it. And then all of a sudden, the new people who came into that app plus the old app are now being advertised to to get the next app and the next app and the next app and so what happens is, is that you in effect can create a network where tens of millions or in our case what we're truly shooting for here what we believe is possible is hundreds of millions of people inside an app network so that once you refer your friend or that person you met on the bus or the person you met next to you in the grocery store line or whoever it is but once you refer your you know your friends or your contacts into one of the Ripple apps 
for the rest of time, that contact can actually be advertised all the other apps in our network, right? And so let's say they spend five dollars in Photo Guessaru, but all of a sudden the next game comes out and they go in there and they like that one better and they spend twenty bucks, and then the next one comes out and they spend ten again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of a sudden that one customer has the ability to actually pay you money virally, you know, over the life cycle of this entire app network. And you know when you really start to to understand it from a strategic you know standpoint, you know the possibilities are just are just pretty limitless here. And why September is so important is because we start it all this month. This is the month where everything we've been talking about since Ripple and launched in April, everything that has taken us so much work and time and energy and money and resources and problem solving and challenge solving and pretty much having to do everything that we could to get right here where we are today everything has really led up to this point of introducing our first app because it's not even about our first app it's about what this app represents and what this app represents is the first time in history that that it's ever been this easy to create a wealth revolution that's ever been you know possible to track your social influence as it spreads virally and get rewarded on the billions of dollars that's taking place in commerce inside all of these in-app purchases and, and transactions around the world I mean what this represents fundamentally is a revolution and it's a people's revolution inside of technology to really reward us and that's why you know, I think it's kind of hilarious that we're starting with Photo Guessaru, which is really this sort of cutesy, you know, fun game that everybody gets to play that's really lighthearted. Yet, what it represents, what it's a, a, a spearhead for, is something so much more significant. You know, what this concept, once we actually put Photo Guessaru out there, which it's actually already out there, if you're in Australia, you can play it right now. But once we activate it worldwide, which we're about to show you those dates. Um, you know, once it's out there, it represents truthfully the proof of concept of something so much more significant. You know, really the wealth revolution that we've been talking about and sharing about is coming to life inside of this app. And that's why I want every single one of us who's on the line tonight and today, you know, it's really our job as the as the original sort of founders of this idea and this company and the pioneers for this movement. When we release Photo Guessaru, it's time to shout and scream from the mountains and the rooftops because the more that we prove this model and prove this concept, the bigger it, it makes the network for the introduction of all of the apps. And as we've already seen from sites like Facebook and Twitter, you know, could you have imagined you know, if you were one of the first 1,000 people to share Facebook? You know, Facebook now has a billion people. You know, at the time of at the time of this webinar, there's less than a thousand people on this call. I mean, think about that. Where could this go, right? A thousand people <laughs> caused a billion people to show up on Facebook in less than a decade, and I think you know, mobile has really sped the time frames up times three, times four. We could reach that many people in a couple years. And uh, you know that's each of us on the line, the pioneers tonight, who have the chance from the introduction of Photo Guessaru to really make that happen. So I think you know, guys and gals, that's why it's so important that um, you know we don't just look at this as oh, it's an app. It's actually so much bigger than that. It's really the the representation of a concept of an idea that's that's infinitely larger. And so I want to dive right into some of the. Um, some of the very specific dates that I know everybody's been been waiting for that we've been waiting for and uh, and really just let you guys know what to expect over the course of September and October for a uh, photo guest Roo's complete rollout now uh, the first date that we're looking at is September 5th through 8th photo guest Roo launches in every worldwide market and as you can tell uh, that is not very far away now the reason why it's December 5th through 8th is because we submitted version 1.4 of the app and, and Sunil actually maybe you could maybe you could share this a little bit more seeing as you've been kind of the one spearheading you know that whole side of things uh, maybe you could just give everybody a little history of kind of the versions up to this point and 
Apple's approval process and kind of where we're at and what we're waiting on. Yeah, so um, let me start with the approval process. It is a, um, a nail-biting business. <laughs> so fundamentally, <laughs> you know, the way the way we work and the way most good companies work is that, you know, you'll... Um, you know, we'll have an app and then we'll release it to two or three people, just the internal team to just make sure that the, the, the rough edges are off. And then you'll release to a restricted group. So we did that with, um, you know, 20 to 30 um, people in the, the inner sort of rippling circle just to make sure that people were sort of getting it, right? I mean, if everybody of those 30 says, yeah, we hate it, then it's like not a good sign, right? <laughs> yeah. so nobody, nobody said that, which is good. So at that point, um, you know, you usually what you would do is release it. I mean, you you know, you're sort of restricted a little. You can't release to too many testers, um, you know, because Apple has restrictions on those sorts of things. So, you know, at that point, once we'd released to about 50 people, we were feeling like, yeah, this is a candidate, right? This is a possible candidate for that. So at that point, you put it up, and you basically it's you press the button which says submit it to Apple, and it gets submitted, and it's a completely black box. You just send it up there. You filled in all the information. You've done everything. You've put in your. You put your best foot forward. Done your best effort. <laughs> and then you yeah. wait. And I know that Jonathan sent out an email, you know, a couple of weeks ago, of like, okay, we're in the Apple waiting game right now. And it really mm -hmm. is like that. Um, for somebody like me, who, um, you know, I like to do things at a fairly fast pace. It's infuriating, right? <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. you can't. You have no control over the process at all. In fact, you know, I've worked at companies that are deeply in bed with Apple. And even at that level, you know, people, you know, companies that have featured apps. So if you ever see an Apple commercial, it'll be one of the apps that's in the little icons there on the on the new iPad or whatever. You know, I've been at those companies, and even there, we have no um, control over the Apple process. It doesn't matter who you know, or what you know, it's not going to mm -hmm. get any better treatment, really. So. Nope. Um, you just wait, and typically the wait times are anywhere between three days and ten days. Um, Apple has a sort of a reporting thing on some of their dev sites where they'll say, you know, 90% of the app. Well, I mean, it's kind of hilarious, right? So the last time I looked, it said 90% of apps or 99% of apps have been improved in five days, and you know, I had version 1.3 out there for six days already, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm in the 1%. <laughs> what a lucky man I am. <laughs> Somehow I don't think you're just the only person no. in that 1%. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh. So, so then it, so basically it goes in, and then you set it up to be automatic so that as soon as, you know, as soon as it's approved, um, you know, it gets, it gets exposed to the various markets, and it's just as simple as that, a bunch of check boxes to say which markets you want it to really so, so yeah. candid question, Sunil. How how did you feel about the performance of the app when we released it in Australia? Did it meet your standards and criteria? Nobody reported any bugs. You know, I'm a technical person, so you know, yeah. I, I, well, I didn't I didn't hear the sort of the feedback on whether people liked it or not. I saw a few people post yeah. on Facebook, which was good. Um, I also one of the technical points. This is my you know my main concern is the technical points. Honestly, once the sort of product mm -hmm. description is done. Um, and the, what I was seeing was that the referral mechanism, there's a referral mechanism be, built deeply into there, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, was working. So that was my main yeah. sort of thing that I was concerned about because it's really super important that if you, you know, Rippling user, get this app and decide to, you know, make a puzzle, share on Facebook, that the person who clicks on that is directly attributed to you. Um, mm -hmm. And this, you know, that mechanism, getting that right, is absolutely critical to us because it enables something that you know you, you haven't said in these words, you've been saying it in different ways, but it enables effectively anonymous users um, to be part of your ripple. So people mm -hmm. you haven't spoken to, uh, I mean I know that's sort of normal because they're two, three levels removed, but it's people that just you happen to see you know in the grocery store and you were playing the app, you know lining up a shot of tomatoes well, they're tomatoes, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. You've been lining up this shot of vegetables. Oh, what, what's that? Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Hey, I'll just share a link with you. That sort of yeah. thing. It's like a five-second interaction which suddenly assigns somebody underneath you who has no concept of rippling um, who can be participating in this kind of uh, rollout, basically. So, yeah. um, you know, I saw... Well, that's uh, good news. Well, so, actually, essentially... Well, let me just tell you what I was really super pleased about with the Australian launch is that there were, you know, a number of people, 50, 100 people, something, 
Um, but, you know, they created about 500 puzzles, which was super good. That's so, a lot of really engagement. Good. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, the feedback, the feedback we've gotten has pretty much been unanimous. I know a lot of people are hungry to play it themselves and really have the game, but every time we've ever pulled the game out at dinner, you know, with a group of people, and we'll, you know, we'll show you how to play. Well, we actually already shared how to play, I think, in the last Photo Guest Room webinar we did, but it's unanimous. Everybody is just sitting around the table trying to figure out what the heck is that thing, right? Everybody's like, is it a car? No, it's not a car. It's not a, it's not a, oh, it's a baby. And, you know, and I'm like, it's just, it's unanimous that it's truly a fun and enjoyable game. So I think the biggest part of what you guys really labored for so much, uh, you accomplished, which is you really created something that is just plain and simple fun. And, you know, I've seen it when, my friend's, you know, seven-year-old kid comes over and he starts saying, "Hey, will you pull out Guessaroo? Will you pull out Guessaroo?" And it's just pure fun. And so I think that, uh, you know, all in all, my friend, I am incredibly pleased and happy with with what happened in Australia. There really was not a single bug to report, which is pretty amazing. And um, basically, the changes that we did make were all um, to give you, the users, actually more visibility into your ripple and into the sort of the referral chain and so you just submitted version 1.4 on Thursday night is that correct Neil? do you want to take yeah, us through where we're at now yeah so uh, I was submitted on Thursday night it contains uh, you know a couple of little tweaks and tuning to, to match more closely I think what we were trying to do with that is really match more closely what rippling users are used to I think one of the concerns was you know typically on a game like this um, one will enter, a user will enter a, a nickname, kind of, and that's mm -hmm. really all they enter, and that is typical, right? It's, it's very unusual to have a game where you enter any more information than that. Um, but, you know, for the purposes of tracking and those sorts of things, you know, the, this app has a, a sign-in screen which has some information. In it. And we Got want it. to make sure that when somebody signs in um, at this stage that it's, it's recognizable to you as, you know, as, as players, right? So that you can see that if you refer the app to so and so down the street, who um, you know is not in the ripples already, that you can see them in your ripple. Um, you know, in in future we're going to have to revisit because we're going to have to see how that is. It's not normal for games to do that, but we really wanted to to match the rippling process mm -hmm. um, and make sure that it was understandable to all of us while we're all getting our feet wet with how this app, this kind of app rollout can happen. So that was that's the main thing we want for. So. Yep. On so in a in a nutshell, in a nutshell, basically, just to just to kind of you know uh, summarize that, you know, we wanted to give all the the Ripem players, you know, the ability to actually see the first name, the last name, the the real information of each person who downloads Photogesaru, just in this very sort of interim process, um, just just for everybody's peace of mind, so you can actually see that whole referral chain. But what you're saying, Samil, is in the future, you know, it's highly likely we'll move toward, towards a model that is actually more uh, where most apps are at, which is just a user, just a username for the app. So a lot of apps aren't really asking for all this information. It's kind of just download the app, play the game, have fun, and you know, it's likely that we'll also move towards that model in the future. Essentially, what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you notice, I mean, if you if you sort of have a discriminating eye for apps, um, I play a lot of games in the in the name of research, um, <laughs> uh, which my kids find hard to believe. But you know, I tell them it's research. So, <laughs> it's um, research. When, when good, that's good. Game, that's good R and D. You go straight in, right? You download the app. You go straight into a a game, and that is the way to engage people. You want, and we work super hard to. Um, to make sure that the first games you played were interesting, engaging, not so hard. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of hard puzzles in Photogesaroo, but we wanted to make the first ones, you know, the first 10 or so, sort of accessible, so it's, like, not too frustrating. Um, so we work very, very hard on those things, good quality pictures, you know, really easy to, not easy, but not hard. Um, I actually have so to check where I'm at on the leaderboard. Um, no, you're not at the top, I'm afraid, my friend. <laughs> No! How did I get bumped out of the top of the leaderboard? That is not cool. Um, it's, all, it's all about engagement. So, so basically, you know, what we're looking at here is depending on, you know, we're already day, I believe this, if that was Thursday, we're now on day five 
probably since it was Thursday night, day four and a half of when we submitted version 1.4, provided that Apple accepts that version, you know, with no questions, you know, really, you know, where that puts us is we're landing PhotoGuessRu in the app stores in every market worldwide somewhere between September 5th and September 8th. And it's just literally dependent upon their approval times. Now, um, when we land it worldwide in every single market, it's going to be in English only to start. And internationalization is coming after that. Uh, but basically why we want to do that is, is because, you know, we want to give everybody around the world, because really there's, there's such a huge shout out to all of our players literally in every country, right? Brazil and, and the Philippines and Italy and, you know, Mexico and Portugal and, I mean, China, the list just goes on and on and on and on of how many countries around the world are participating in the Ripple platform. And even though it's only in English, we didn't want the app to be restricted just to, let's say, you know, Australia, the United Kingdom, United States, Canada. So this basically makes it so that everybody can download the app, everybody can share and, 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 and play the game, but um, it's all in English. And then, Sunil, maybe you can talk a little bit about internationalization for PhotoGuessRu, which, um, you know, we've been able to give a, a really hard date on this as September 28th. It's pretty much, given all the things everybody's doing, um, a really solid date for when we could have internationalization. You can share a little bit about what that means. Yeah, so there's two levels of, of that. Um, you know, the easy level, the kind of easy level of internationalization is that if, you, if you're playing the game, you know, the buttons have words on them, right? And, you know, the research we've done has indicated um, that, you know, apps that internationalize, internationalize the whole thing. All the buttons are written in that language. Um, you know, all the instructions and all those things are, are in that language. So that's one level. The second level, which is actually a little more difficult um, for us because we have user-generated content, is that the puzzles that are created by people need to be sort of flagged in that language, and we need to make sure we, you know, translate all the samples and you know make sure that everything sort of works with the whole process. If somebody's in Brazil, that you know, ideally they would see Portuguese, they would see Portuguese puzzles, right? So we don't want them. We don't want in, in particular. I mean, maybe sort of there are some countries which are fine with English, but there are other countries like the US, for instance, if they start seeing Portuguese puzzles, that's going to be a bit of a problem, right? Or Chinese puzzles. <laughs> right? So we have to be careful on that level. So um, we are working on that. There's a little bit of work there to, to get that together. Um, but I think that, you know, that date's a good date to do that. And then hopefully the approval process is very straightforward on that one because we're not adding any fundamental features. Um, Apple are rather fickle sort of um, on their approval process. They're not fickle. I mean, they're by the letter of the law, but unfortunately the law is a massive screed that's difficult to get through. So, um, you know, I, I think that the 28th, once we launch, you know, the next few days, the 28th is a, a good date for internationalization. Okay. Which, which, I, which I'm excited about. I think it's going to make a huge difference, and it's, it's really just as cutting edge and as state-of-the-art as it gets uh, for how apps are, are really being internationalized now. And then basically, um, while we've been developing iOS, now just to explain why Android is behind um, uh, iOS is because really the 90-day app, that the 90-day app incubation challenge, which is is, is you know the company Sneal is a part of, they don't do Android, so none of the apps that they're developing are in Android at all. They literally had to hire a new developer who's doing Android custom for Ripplin. So. You know, this was not really something they even planned on doing, and they took it on uh, really to do custom just for Ripplin. So obviously, um, you know, that's, that came and started after the iOS version was already done. So I know that you said last time we talked, Sunil, that um, the guy was really close to actually finishing all of the, actually he had finished the functionality of PhotoGuessRu for Android, and he was now just you know, kind of making sure that it fits in all the screens and getting the UI and the UX correct and all that good stuff. So do you think there's any way that we might even possibly see earlier than the seventh? Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> uh, you know, the thing with Android is there are, there are, I mean, I don't want to get too technical here, but, you know, the thing with Android is it's just, it's a different ball game. 
Um, the things that you care about in iOS, the things that are difficult in iOS, are easy in Android and vice versa. You know, the easy things like, you know, the way the puzzles are created and those sorts of things are actually quite difficult in Android. Um, so we're working very hard on that. I refuse to commit to anything before the seven. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I mean, the, it's, it's a lot of progress. And, you know, I think one thing we've already learned is, is that, you know, this, this honestly, just total truth be told, you know, it's a lot harder than it looks. You know, really balancing the Ripplin platform, which is its own huge platform, with all of the back office, you know, gamification, you know, play tab features, with all of the commission payments worldwide, with the user types of fans and players, and I don't want to bore anybody, but then apps and all this other stuff. I mean, this is this is a humongous vision and undertaking that that we've all taken on. And we want to make sure that, you know, the reason why we were comfortable giving these dates out tonight and, you know, our process here moving forward is that when we give a date, we want that date to be as darn accurate as humanly possible. And we've already made that mistake before. We have. And simply put, we just did not, you know, understand and anticipate the difficulty and the timelines and the extent of what we were up to and we missed underestimated the challenge really and so we missed our dates and I don't ever want to miss dates again and I know Sunil can you know can probably share and anybody who has a technology background can share that you know hitting a date in technology is 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 an accomplishment in and of itself because pretty much any date you get you know add on double that and that's the real date and if we had just done that from the start everything would have been great but you know, from this point forward, we want to make sure that the dates we're giving are really, truly the most accurate ones we can, and that you understand the whole process. Uh, you know, as you're following along, because really we're building this together. It's it's the Ripplin community and the Ripplin players. You know, we want you as as in the know as possible, um, because it's our company. It really is all of our company, and and it's our movement. And so, Sunil, we're running out of time, so I just want to kind of move quickly to get through the rest of this stuff. But you know, simply put. Um, let me kill that phone. You know, simply put, this is the first time in history that you, you know, the person who's watching this, has the ability for viral customer and income generation. And, you know, that's a humongous statement because we were talking the other day, Sunil, about this, and you kind of brought it up and you were like, you know, wait a minute, like, when in the history of direct sales or really any business? Um, that any of us have been a part of, could you actually make money from retail customers signing up virally, right, completely viral without you ever talking to them? And I think that's almost like the golden goose, the golden egg that everybody's always searched for, and really Ripplin is, is providing it. And this app is a perfect example where, you know, as you're about to see, you sign up, you play the game, and you share it, and that's it. That's all you do. And, you know, if more friends sign up and play the game and share it and people start purchasing coins, you know, to win puzzles and solve challenges, you're literally not, you know, you're not out there pounding the pavement. You're not trying to sell anybody. You're not, you know, trying to close sales. You're not, you're not doing anything, yet you have the ability to make money and you have the ability to make money virally, which is just unprecedented. It really is. You know, it's unprecedented. So... Um, I don't know. That gets me pretty excited, Sunil. What about you? Yeah, it's it's awesome. I think it it fits. You know what apps really are? They're fleeting. Um, you know, they're they we we like apps that are very uh, narrow in their focus. You know, do a little thing very well, and uh, sort of the the idea of having a very light handoff from one person to the other, just getting them excited. You know, just just excited by just seeing it, and then being able to try it out and get engaged in that way without the whole thing of like explaining to them the well you know the health benefits of this that and the other you don't have to do any of that right it's like oh this is kind of a fun game that's it that's your pitch it's a fun game that's it awesome. which is which is pretty amazing which which brings us to the training uh, really which is quite simple now as long as everybody follows this training to a T nobody deviates there's really nothing else you have to do. So the first thing that you have to do once we release the app, and this is what's most important that you share with your team, you share with your players, share this with everybody, 
is that when you download the app, you'll have the ability to log in with your Ripwin credentials. So it's very important that you log in with your Ripplin credentials because that's what tracks all the sharing to your Ripplin account. So when you get here, you can either click already signed up, log in here, and you'll literally use your same email and your same password that you use on Start My Ripple, uh, or I think you could actually log in with Facebook, and no. after you click... Yeah, hold on, you... hold on one sec. So, um, yeah, you have to log in somehow on there. So, um, already sign in. You know, the, the difference here is this is this is Ripplin's app, but this is just a whole ecosystem in itself. So, the already signed in really refers to PhotoGuessaroo, not to Ripplin. So, don't go there first. Okay. Um, the first thing is to, to log in with Facebook is actually the best. It's the best way to do it because it will take you straight to Facebook. Facebook's going to say, hey, uh, authorize PhotoGuessaroo to you know, access your basically your wall and your that's it. Um, if you say yes to that, it'll bounce back to the app and then you'll be presented with the sign up screen. So the step two is right. So connect with Facebook. The reason to connect with Facebook is that uh, you're going to end up doing it anyway because when you start sharing, it's the easiest way to share. I mean, you can email and you can SMS to share, but Facebook's the best because it's the broadest reach. Um, so, um, you know, so you'll see the sign-up page. That is the place where, you know, your information will be filled in, your Facebook information will be filled in already there. But if it happens that, and it may happen, that your Ripplin email address is not the email address you have registered with Facebook, it's fine. Just change it there. It'll be filled in already, but just change it. So, so basically, the, once you get to this sign-up sign screen, 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 the sign most screen. important piece is you just use your email, your Ripplin email, to sign in. Yeah, don't care about the password, really. I mean, you have to have a password, but the password is for PhotoGuessaroo. Um, if you're already within Ripplin, you know, fundamentally, you're, you're the same person. Your email is really the only way we have to know, um, you know, that, that it's the same person as you. So... You already signed up really refers to PhotoGuessaroo um, rather than the Ripplin ripples. I know that's a little bit confusing, but we wanted to keep the app. We wanted to make a model, actually, that was sort of more generally, if we find it, if we, Ripplin, find a good app that we want to integrate into the ripples, you know, we can't expect them to be deeply integrated with the Ripplin process, the startmyripple.com. So we sort of are starting to model that of being like, okay, we're lightly integrated. If you're using the same email, that's you. That is you. You are already associated with your Ripplin. Um, Got it. So pretty much use the same email on your Ripplin account, same password. All you you will have to enter a new public username because that's your username for PhotoGuessaroo, correct? Yeah, that's right. But again, that's only it's only in PhotoGuessaroo, and it can be whatever yeah. you would like it to be. Want that to be. And then you click time. sign up. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah. Click sign up, and then you'll be taken straight into gameplay. And the main thing with gameplay is play. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> play, play, play along. That the is. Leaderboard, the leaderboards on PhotoGuessaroo. We we worked. You know, we did apply. Tried out a number of things on there, but the leaderboards. We came around to the best way to look at leaderboards is. Who's played the most? You know, not who's uh, played the most, not who's got the most yeah. votes. Basically, who's playing the most? Because playing is critical, right? Holy the smokes! Playing. I already, Alex has already solved Alex. 308 puzzles. <laughs> wow, I've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> no, I don't even see you on the screen. Maybe you're down in the number 20. I, spot. How couldn't somebody have photoshopped me on this screen? I mean. Oh, that's all good. Okay, so so basically, how to share the game is possibly the the coolest thing I've ever seen in the history of direct sales. You just play the game. There's there's really nothing else that that you do. You just literally have fun and and play the game. So I'll quickly walk you through the two ways that people actually get tracked back to you as you play the game. So. The real unique thing about PhotoGuessaroo is that it gives you the ability to create your own puzzles, which is what no other app in this space, in this particular genre of apps, has ever done before. And so as you create your own puzzles, what you do is you challenge your friends to guess your puzzle, right? So you can share your puzzles with your friends on Facebook, you can share your puzzles with your friends through email, and you can share your puzzles through your, with your friends through SMS text messaging. Now, any way that you share that puzzle after you created it, there's a specific link 
that gets sent out when you share that puzzle that's tracked back to you. So as your friends are, you know, sort of getting your email or getting your text message or seeing your app or your puzzle on Facebook and they're clicking that link to check out what the what the puzzle is and figure it out and download the app, that's tracking them back to you. So that's incredibly important because you know what Samil was saying before is that sometimes you know the, what what we do when we share apps is we're playing an app and we say hey you know have you seen this game you know go check it out in the app store download this app that's not what we can that's not what we can do here you can't tell your friend hey go download this app in the app store because if you tell your friend to go download it in the app store there's no way for us to know that it was you who referred them there's nothing tracking them back to you so you don't tell your friend to go download the app in the app store what you do is you know, you send them an invite to to solve your puzzle, to play your puzzle, to play the game, and then when they click on it and they download it, now they're in the game. So that's step number one: is you you send that invitation straight from actually creating your own puzzles. Step number two is, if you notice on the leaderboard here, there's a little feature that allows you to email friends or SMS friends an invitation to join the app. So let's say that you haven't created a puzzle and you just want to invite your friend to come play Photo Gisaru and come download the game, then what you would do is you would just go to the leaderboard and you would email friends or SMS friends and you can invite them straight to the app and that's really it. Those are the two ways for how you share the app. And I just want to stress one more time, and I'm going to stress it on the next page actually as well, um, you know, they have to click your link in order to be tracked back to you so these are the only two ways, unless I'm missing something, Sunil, you can correct me, but these are the only two ways to share the app. Uh, yeah, I mean, fundamentally, actually, it's there's three really, but two are the, kind of the same. There's the sort of the random, like, just go to the leaderboard and share the game, but then there's a share associated with a puzzle, either a puzzle you created or a puzzle you played. So the screen that's up there is having played a puzzle, you know, you can rate it and then you can share it. Ah, Facebook the share. infamous actually, step three. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if, you um, if you make a puzzle, it's the same button. Actually, you'll you'll see. Um, it was actually on a previous slide. Dude. So there, you can you can share the puzzle. And what I like about the sharing the puzzle you've created is it can be very personal, right? A, 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 you know, a picture of your family um, is a good example. A picture of your house, something in your house that maybe only a, a, a small amount of your friends might know about, right? The nice thing mm. about that is there's a personal touch to it of like, you know, I, I shared this, I, I made this puzzle on Photo Guest Room, and they're sort of like, yeah, I sort of recognize that. That's from your house. That's kind of cool. So they're having, having created a puzzle, you can share right from there as well. The, um, the puzzle they will see when they open the app, when they sign in after the app, will be that puzzle. That's amazing. So any puzzle that we click, share this puzzle, our friend will, will click our link. They'll download the app, they'll open it up, they'll be tracked to us, and they'll see the puzzle that we shared with them, correct? Yeah, yeah this is what we want, nice and smooth, right? So that people sort of feel like they're embraced into the game really early. You know? Absolutely. So basically, just to summarize, this is why it's important that when you're logging in to PhotoGuessRoo to begin with, you know, absolutely make sure that you use your Ripplin email address because that it's, it's that account that we're going to track all the people you invite to photo guest the room back to and you know one thing I just kinda wanna say is a stern note you know we've had this talk big time as a company you know we're we're talking about potentially hundreds of thousands of people millions of people maybe even more so that doesn't really give us the ability to manually move people around okay that's just way too many people so this is a firm policy is that there's absolutely no moving or replacing or switching anyone once they come into PhotoGuessRoo, the app. It's simply too labor intensive for any team to handle, and that's a firm rule. So that's why it's so important that you share these instructions with your team. It's actually all incredibly simple. I'll reiterate it one more time. When you download the app, you simply log in with your Ripplin ID, and once you're inside the app, you share, the, you share from all the functions within the app. That's it. And that's how the whole referral chain is, is really tracked back to you. So there's really not much more to know than that. And, you know, the next thing is just waiting for us to, to launch the app worldwide and get your invitation, download it, and start playing and going to town. There is one more way. 
that I want to just say we put in there as a um, as a fallback position. So you know it can happen that you're in the car, you're on your phone, and you're talking to someone. You say, "Hey, you know, I've been playing Photo Guesseru," and somebody gets excited about it, right? And you haven't had time. <laughs> you can't. Well, you're in your car. You're not going to be texting, right? Or you're not going to be emailing. So, and you sometimes can't stop people, right? You can't stop them from downloading an app. You don't want to stop them, actually. So, you know, let's say you've sh you shared it with them verbally, and they go and they download the app, and the next thing you know, they call you and they say, "Hey, I got the app. It's super cool." Or you look at your you know, your ripple and you don't see them. This is bad, right? We don't want that. So we added one little thing, and I, I would like to stress that, um, you know, this is in there for sort of safety for this backup position. It's not ideal. You really want to be fairly um, rigorous with, with sharing the links because that's sort of how we want to do it in future as well. But the way to do it is if your friend calls you and says, yeah, down to the app, it's really cool, and you're like, darn it, you know, I didn't share the link with them. What you can do is have them go to the leaderboard section and search for you as a friend. So they can search by email or they can search by um, they can search by you know username, photo guesser username. And once um, you know once you've shared, once they've searched for you and they've clicked on your profile, they will be referred by you. Now, so bear in mind what's what's you know the reason we can't be too tight with that is because the first person they um, they look for in the profile is the person that they're going to be referred under if they don't already have a referrer. So this is a fallback position just for the oh dear this didn't work quite. Ah. Well. None of your fault. It's not your fault. You just weren't able to share it with them, or they were just way too enthusiastic, right? I mean. You know, sometimes I'm on the phone with people and I say, oh, I love this app, and by the time I'm finished talking with them, they've done it, downloaded, they're playing the thing, right? In that situation, you want to tell them, search for me and go see my profile. There's a reason to do that anyway, um, and the reason to do that is because if you've created puzzles, which I'm assuming you will, and I highly encourage you to do that, if you've created puzzles, all your puzzles are listed there. So if you have puzzles that you really like, um, you're going to tell them to go to your profile page. So you know, if you're on the phone with somebody and you know that they might go and do it, just say, hey, go download the app and go and look for me. Look for my email address on there. Find me. Go find me and see this puzzle I created. It's awesome. That will automatically put them underneath you in the tree. Perfect. So as the last fallback option, if, if somebody downloaded the app because they're so darn speedy, you couldn't even invite them and they already downloaded it, you can have them search for your profile and when they're the first person to click on your profile, if they don't have a refer, then they'll be tracked back to you. Yep. Perfect, my friend. And, you know, bear in mind, I mean, Thank I you for that follow-up. I want to say one little thing about that. This is, um, this is again, I'm almost unheard of, right? I mean, <laughs> what are the chances of somebody signing up for, you know, a, a physical good, right, a shake or something, so quickly that they didn't manage to get referred? It doesn't happen like that usually in this kind of referral system, but this is obviously a new medium. Um, we have to take care of these new ways that people can, can sign up quickly without you, right? So we're, that's what we're trying to address there. Absolutely, my friend. So in closing here, because we came to the top of the hour and in trying to keep it to a tidy 60 minutes, the most important thing to remember is to have fun. And, you know, I truly think that you know, even though I think the value of tonight's webinar uh, was, was several fold, number one is to really get a chance to meet Sunil and just kind of, you know, meet the people then their, their, their intelligence and brilliance who are really working on, on these apps and really working on this model for you and really get a better understanding of the whole game that we're playing and the process and everything that's been going on. And number two is to get the specific training you needed because very soon we're going to make an announcement to the world. And so when we announce this, there's an email that's going to go out to everybody saying, guess what? Photo Guesseru is live worldwide. Go to the App Store and download it now. You know, log in, have fun, play games, share apps, and get paid, which is really, you know, kind of the core, a core of, of what we're all about. And so as we're doing this, I think the most important thing to remember is just to have fun because I really haven't seen a more 
like sort of entertaining business model in my entire life. You can literally just play games, share apps, and get paid. So my friends, have fun uh, as you go throughout this whole process. And last piece I want to share with everybody is that this month honestly is going to be the biggest month that Ripplin has really had yet. And it's going to be the biggest month that Ripplin has had yet for a variety of reasons. Number one, because of what we were talking about in the beginning of tonight's call, the proof of concept to the revolution that we're all a part of creating. And number two is because we also have a series of products that are being released this month that are going to have the potential to put big profits in your pocket very soon. And I'm not sure if everybody caught this, but if you didn't catch it a couple days ago, if you logged into your Ripplin back office, you were able to click on the play tab and you were able to see that your commissions, your commissions area is now live. So on the bottom of the play tab, you can click get my money and everybody can currently set up and I recommend everybody does set up your preferred payment method worldwide for how you want to receive all your commissions because this is all live. The second people start downloading this game and playing it and purchasing coins and all the different things that they're going to be doing, all of that money is being tracked in the Ripple. The commissions members area is live. You can log into the play tab right now, click the get my money button, and it's going to walk you through a process to set up how you want to receive your money worldwide. You can integrate it to your bank account and Ripple and uh, Ripple will deposit the money straight to your bank account. You can get checks. You can actually hook it up to a debit or a credit card and it'll get deposited straight there. So there's a whole bunch of different ways for you where you can choose how you actually want to get paid on your rewards. So what I want you to know is that September is going to be the most important month in our business period because this is the month where you know we're all really about to get paid off of the social sharing and the activity that we create in our Ripple. And last but not least, for a lot of you that were following uh, uh, what happened at our last Ripple and Unleashed event, and I think on some of the presentations we shared about some future products to come, a little birdie just dropped off the world's first voice activated smartwatch. So in the middle of you know releasing Photo gets a Roo in the middle of the huge announcement that we're making on September 16th about something completely game changing that's about to happen and has a chance to put huge profit back in all of our pockets. We also just got the first shipment in of the world's first voice activated smartwatch. And we only have a limited number of these. So you're going to be getting a, an email if you were one of the people to pre order the watch in Dallas at Ripple and Unleashed, you're going to be getting an email soon about your pre-order and then we're going to put them live in the commerce area and we'll update everybody when we get closer to that too and there's you really if you want one of these watches you're going to have to act fast because they're going to go quickly and uh, I'll probably make a little video to share with you guys too because these things are just so darn cool it's literally like James Bond uh, you know in real life and so I kind of wear it as a, as a proud badge of honor at Ripplin because it really represents kind of the innovation that I think our, our, our group and company is up to. So with that being said, my friends, Sunil, I want to thank you so much, my friend. Uh, you know, truly the contribution that you're making to our movement and, uh, and to what it is, the mission that we're all up to is invaluable. And uh, the work that you've done on PhotoGuessaru, the work you're doing on all the other apps that are coming down the pipeline is truly bar none excellence. And, and really just incredibly quality. I consider you a craftsman. You're a true artisan craftsman of, techno of technology partner. And I just want to say thank you so much for, for all the information you shared with all of us here tonight. And uh, to each and every one of you from around the world, all the countries that represent this incredible movement, I hope you guys are as excited as we are because uh, this is about to get hot and things are about to pop off and it's time to get paid, and it's time to share, and it's time to have the most fun we've ever had uh, building uh, the funnest business we've ever built. So appreciate all of you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we will speak soon.